Hi, so continue on with our 450L Ethernet. Uh, I'm now going to show you how to you integrate this into Studio 5000. Now the first thing you'll need to do is download the AOP uh, for the 450L ENETR. So what you do is you traditionally go to the PCDC uh, Compatibility and Download Center from Rockwell. So within the website, which I've shown you here in the video, you'd simply see searching here for the term 450L and then you will find then the Ethernet AOP. Now, I won't be able to show you this at the moment because the product I'm using is a beta version and the AOP has not been released yet, but when it is, it will be in this download section here. Once you get that, you simply unzip it onto your machine and then it will install the add-on profile as per other products. To then use that within your software, you basically right-click on the Ethernet module, um, click, click New Module, search 45L, it's the only one they've got there, you see, 45L E N E T R. Create. Within there, we then have the IP address. So I've used the private network to make it simple, but if you'd use boot P and change it, you'd put the IP address into the IP address field there. So I know it was 88 from before. Give it the name, so I'm going to call it LC for light curtain. Within here, you'll see module definition. You have to click on to change. Uh, click on to light curtain. And within here, you specify what light curtain you've got. So I know mine are a 450LE. So you'd have a 450LE or B. Uh, the light curtain series, mine are Rev A. Uh, firmware version, mine's 4.02. 4 uh, this way, you put in your, your actual height of the curtain. So mine were 300 mil. And then the protective resolution. So mine was finger, so 14 mil. And I've not used a cascading plugin. Click OK. It'll then change the module definition. Okay, close this. So now you see you've now added the uh, light curtain into your project. You will now see it's also created some tags for the light curtain. So if we go to lc.i, which are the input ones, um, when the light curtain is running, you'll see that run mode is enabled. And when that light curtain is healthy and nothing is intruding on the protective field, the status bit will be one. So what we'll do now is we'll download to the controller. Uh, show you how you have to set the uh, safe network number uh, and reset uh, ownership of the curtains to make them work. So communications. Okay. So I can see down here it says saved network number mismatch. Now this is because this set of uh, light curtains has been used on a different project. Um, so we go into safety, uh, click reset ownership, and click yes, yes. And you see down there it now says running. So this now means that we're now we are this controller is now owning those light curtains. So, like I said before, they were previously used on a different project. Um, you have to then click in there and reset ownership, which you'd have to do with anything to do with safety. It's as per anything like Point AO or Drives, you do the same method, really, to basically pair them to the controller. So now if we go to controller tags, you should see that the status bit is one. So basically that means the protective field of the curtains is okay. So if I go and break the protective field of my hand over here, you should see that goes to a zero. So you'd simply use that status flag, that Boolean, with inside your safety program. So as you'd normally write safety code, you know, you'd, you'd use the inputs in here in, in, in safety task. With that, you just simply look at the status flag to drive a light curtain input to say it's healthy. Now you can do advanced features. We're not, not going to go into in the video today where you can do message instructions to the actual light curtain and then pull out diagnostic information such as beam status on the fly. So you can then start to do things such as uh, get, getting if there's dust on the lens and things like that. Within the add-on profile, just click to go in there. Um, there is no view of beam intensity and status as a live feed there. So if I do go in there and break my finger through the beam, you can actually see which beam number it is as a live feedback. So it's quite useful for setup. Uh, and you can look at the beam intensity as well. So you can see there, I've actually not got them that greatly aligned, <laughs> but they are aligned. But this you can use this to, to, to tweak it and get it uh, spot on. Uh, but that's a, a simple overview, really, of the 450L into Studio 5000.